Matthew chapter 3. We're going to read verse 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you're coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it, per, permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from him and saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Now let's go to chapter 4 real quick, guys. And I'm going to just, at this moment, just read verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Amen. We can stop there for a moment. Um, so my point for this morning, guys, and we'll see how many points we can put in this morning. But my point, my next step into moving forward that you and I need to have or to be doing is that you and I need to be people that are determined determined. This is something that you're going to see with somebody who is pushing and pressing and persevering. Persevering. It is determination, guys. Determination. Now, let's let's think about Jesus, guys, and let's let's look at this this uh, role model of ours. Jesus was a normal person like you and I, guys. He was born um, of course supernaturally, guys. But he was, his deity was 100% God and 100% man, okay? He felt everything that we felt. He lived the way we lived. So when he was raised, when he grew up, when he was born and, and raised, he was a little kid. I mean, I can imagine him playing with carritos, the cars, you know, maybe little soldiers. I don't know. But he was playing. He would play. Uh, there was no doubt he, he had a passion for the word of God too, right? Because we know that at, at the age of 12 or 13, he's with the... In, in the temple, and he's reading, and he's teaching even the Pharisees. So he had a passion for reading and so forth, but he was a kid, guys. And then we know also that, you know, through history, too, that he was a carpenter, guys. As he grew up, he got a job, and he became a carpenter. So this was his, his normal life, guys, okay? At the age of 30, guys, this is what's happening now right here, what, we're, what we read here in Matthew chapter 3. At, at the age of 30, he felt... The pull to go and get baptized, guys. And let me tell you something. This is what initiated his ministry, okay? Now, when he got baptized, the supernatural sign, guys, that not only Jesus saw, but John saw, and maybe those that were around there, the audience, they saw the heavens open up. This is the sign, guys. This is the sign that we've been talking, the sign. The sign, it was supernatural, and it was heavenly. The heavens opened up. The spirit came down as a dove and, and lit him up. A voice from heaven, the father, saying, this is my beloved son in who I am well pleased. And, and it's beautiful because this too is the trinity, guys. The father, the son, and the Holy Spirit were all there. This was the sign. This was the sign of the start of a new season for Jesus, guys. Again, he was normal from the very beginning. Yes, he liked to read. Yes, he was passionate. Because, again, we see it as at the age of 12. He's even teaching the teachers at church because he was into Jesus. He was into the word. He was into the, the doctrine. Um, but he would live the normal life. Into the sign came, and that caused, it, caused an entire shift in his life. A new season came into being. Now, this is when I was talking to you in the beginning, guys, that Change and shift come in different ways. Sometimes, you know, it's very hard. And you're going to go through something that is going to be at times very devastating. And you're going to say, why, God? And I don't understand, God. And God is going to use that to make a shift in your life. And it's hard because of what you're going through. 
And I don't understand. And, you know, we talked about this already, but I just, I want you to feel that. So there's two different kinds of signs and two different kinds of situations. One that you're, that is hard and you don't understand. And then you have one, like in Jesus' case, in this point, that he was ready to get into the ministry. He knew he was called for a purpose. And now when the sign came, it's almost to say it's celebration time. Because now I'm going to get in to what God has for my life. And it's awesome. And it's a lot of celebration that takes place. I don't know if there's anyone in here who's experienced that. But in my life, I've experienced it, guys. And I pray that I, I know that some of you here know exactly what I'm saying because you too. Where you see that God opens up something for you, a door, something to say, oh, man, you know, and you get excited. Yeah, it's a little scary. Yeah, it's like, oh, man, because change is, is kind of different. I don't know how it's going to, would I fail? Would I, would I make it? And there's so many things. But no doubt inside there's a lot of jubilee, a lot of celebration, a lot of excitement. And I want to see that Jesus is the same. He's, he's being baptized and his dad affirms him, this is my beloved son and who I am well pleased. And he's like, oh, thank you, God, you know. And, but check this out. But, but there's a but. There's a but. So with this celebration, with this sign and this new season that he's about to enter, some days pass, guys, you know, and, and he's moving into his destiny. He's moving into his purpose. But as few days pass by, as he prepares himself, the Bible says he's fasting. He's, fast, he's preparing himself because he's going into this new season of his life. The Bible says that there was a detour. Matthew chapter 4. There is a detour. So he's ready and he's excited and I'm, you know, I'm the son of God, and I know who my father is, and the Holy Spirit has anointed me to preach the gospel. And, and he has all this going, and he's moving into his destiny, and as he's preparing himself, he now ends up in the wilderness, guys. There is a detour in his life, and there now is a delay in his life. And he's like, man, trying to move forward, trying to go to, to do all that, that, you know, he's been called to do. And I want to tell you something. I don't know about you, but I've been here before, and that right there is a little bit discouraging. Like, what, God? I thought you told me. You showed me this sign. You know, you told me it was going to be her. You told me it was going to be him. You told me you were going to heal me. You told me you were going to give me a breakthrough. You told me you were going to be Jehovah Jireh. It's Friday, and I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to turn on my life. You told me the check was coming. You told me. You told me. And, and we find ourselves because we saw the sign and because we feel encouraged, and we're going to move forward, and I'm going to believe you. I made a decision, but now there's a detour, and now there's a delay, and now there's discouragement. And it's normal, and it's natural, guys. Proverbs 13, 12. Look at what Proverbs 13, 12 says. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. I was hoping this was true, God. I was hoping that I saw this sign real, and, and it was a real deal. And, but now the hope that I had on this sign is delayed, is deferred, and now we're sick and we're discouraged and we're down and we're out. And now this is here. This is the place, guys. This is the place where you and I need to be determined. We need to be determined. This is where point number one becomes a reality. There has to be some determination. Let me tell you something. This is the way I define determination, guys. Determination is based on a decision. Okay, we go back to point number two, right? Decision. Determination is based, it is the foundation of a decision that we have already made. And we've made it by faith, right? Because we didn't see all the pieces and we don't understand everything that's going on. But we do know that God has shown us something. 
And I, by faith, I've made that decision to do it. And I've stepped into it. Now, it's not working out the way I thought. It's not happening the way I imagined. I mean, it's actually got worse than what it was. But you know what? I made the decision. So this, the determination is based on a decision that we've made by faith. But it's also a decision that is firm and focused. Firm and focused on what God has shown us. So I want to give you, again, Jesus is the role model, guys. Jesus is the role model. Hebrews 12.2. Check out Hebrews 12.2. Determination is based on a decision that made that is made by faith that is firm and focused on the sign. I know what you showed me is true, guys, or God. I know, and I'm going to be firm right here. I'm going to be firm. I'm going to be firm, and I'm, I'm going to be flexible here. I'm not going to give in here. I'm going to be firm, and I'm going to stay focused on what you showed me, God. Check this out, Hebrews 12.2. Let's put it up there, guys. Hebrews 12, 2, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he had a joy that was set before him. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. A joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Leave that verse up there real quick. For the joy that was set before him. So look at Jesus. So let's go all the way back to Matthew chapter 4. So Jesus has a destiny. Jesus was detour, uh, detoured. There was a detour in his destiny and there was a delay. Now we're even, we're even seeing a death, right? Endured the cross. We know that he died. So in his destiny, he was moving forward. There was a detour, there was a delay, and there was a death. And the only reason that he was, be, he was able to be so determined to go through all that is for the joy that was set before him. He was firm and focused on what? He was firm and focused. We can do so much, but let's go back to Matthew chapter 4. I want to say that he was firm and focused on what he knew that he saw that day when he saw the heavens open and the Spirit of God come and the voice from, from the Father saying, this is my beloved Son. And because he was able to see that and believe that. Now, I want to make it applicable, guys. Amen. Because God was 100% man. He was just like you and me. He felt everything he felt. He got excited the way we got excited about destiny and purpose. So when he saw it, he was with joy. Because I'm telling you, when we see God and the stuff that he's telling us, that we're his sons and that we've been called and that we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, that we're the head and not the tail, that we're blessed coming in and blessed going out. When we hear all these things, no weapon for us against us shall prosper. When we start to hear, we get excited and it is great. And there is a joy. And because of all this joy that we're seeing, and, and that helps us to be determined to go through detours, that, to go through some delays, and even death itself. Bring it on. Bring it on. Determination. Determination. Come on, guys. God wants us to be determined, guys. If you find yourself in a place where I felt God was going to do this. I thought it was him. I'm telling you, it was. It is. But the detour and the delay, we're going to see in a little bit, that's part of his plan. But you and I have to be determined. You have to have some determination that is based on the decision of faith that you've already made. You've already made it. You already made a step into it. You're already in. You're going in. Yeah, it's not working out the way you're thinking and the way you thought and all the way you planned. Well, I thought it was going to be like this, God, and I thought it was going to be this way. And you told me last week, and <laughs> just last week. And we, we, I thought I was going to be up here already. And God says, no, 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 it's a process, it's a process, it's a process. And there's going to be detours and delays. But I'm telling you, man, the people that are moving forward, 
are determined. You and I need to be determined. And again, you've already made the decision. It's based on the decision you made. Stick with it. Stick with it. Guys, our thoughts are not his thoughts, nor are ways his ways. We're not always going to understand. All God wants us to do is believe. Believe. You made a decision to follow him. Okay, stick with it. Now, talking about delays and detours, and actually, guys, I want to even give you, these are going to be two others, guys, that are going to be signs. These signs that we're going to see, you know, when it comes to people that are moving forward. And we've been talking about it already, but I want to use these also as signs, these signs that we're going to see. So what I'm trying to say that if you find yourself in a detour right now, if you find yourself in a delay, you're in the right place. Yeah, you might seem you're not moving forward right now, but that is still part of the process, guys. So I want us to go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Let's put it up there, brothers. Uh, sister, I don't know who's up there, but I want us to read it very carefully, and I want you to help me as I read it, because I, I, I want you to see this. The scripture says, then Jesus was what? Was what? Jesus was, let's say it all together. Jesus was, andale, one more time. Jesus was, one more time. Jesus was led. By who? Where? Who's he going to meet? Who led him? It's a God thing. It's a God thing. Your detour, your delay, God has designed it for a purpose. This is the reason why if you find yourself there, it's not maybe that you did something wrong. Now, if you did something wrong, well, maybe. But even then, God can use that to even do something great in your life. But I'm telling you, when it comes to detours and delays, that is part of God's agenda and moving us forward. That's just the way it is. That's what it is. Amen? So when we look at our first point of the, uh, determination, there's no doubt, guys, that the reason why God led, leads us to wilderness and to detours and delays, it, there's no doubt that it is for us to develop determination. Okay? There is no doubt. It increases our faith because we have to believe if everything was going well and smooth, I mean, yeah, we believe God, but it's like, yeah, I believe God. Oh, yeah, we're so excited. We're in the move. But it's when it gets hard, right? It's when it's like, ah, oh, and e, and that's not what I planned, God. And, and, and that's where really faith starts to like, okay, but do you believe me here? So faith definitely increases. Determination pushes through uh, the situation that we're going through. But it is not only for determination, but it's all also to develop us and to show us actually what's in our heart, guys. You know, when it comes to serving God, and man, we're going to get a little bit personal, really deep, and I want to share you my heart, because look at guys, God has saved us for a purpose. And it's not for your purpose, but it's for his purpose. And having purpose is exciting. Because many times we find ourselves, why was I created for God? What is this life about? When you find God and you find purpose, 
cre- changes everything. It creates excitement, and it's beautiful. But let me tell you something. You see, all that, I understand it in my head. And when I think of these things, it creates a good feeling in my life. Because that's how it works. So we, we have it in our head. And then we have it in our body in a sense of the feelings. Like, man, it's exciting. It's purpose. And it's great. And it's God. And this is what I was called to do. The detour and the delay comes. And then we start to kind of freak out. And not only that, guys, and we're going to talk a little bit about him too, but look, he went into the wilderness and, and the devil was there too. So not only was there a detour and a delay, but the devil was there. And I want to tell you something. When it comes to God, guys, and the calling and the purpose of your life in God, he will take you through detours and to delays to see if that what's in your head is in your heart. Because let me tell you something. If it's in your heart, no matter what we go through, God, we're in it together. That's how you know. Because if it's here, when it gets tough, see ya. Where do you want to be, ya? But if I love you, through thick and thin, baby, Rain or shine, sickness and health, you know, my heart is in it. So God will take us through delays and detours to see what's in your heart. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 and 3. This is the method that he uses. We're going to see it with the people of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 and 3, it says, And you shall remember that the Lord, your God, so he's he's talking personal, man, and you shall remember that the Lord, your God, led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So I need us to see that, guys. Even with the people of Israel, the people of Israel, guys, could have gone right into the promised land. Now, we're talking about these people that God used Moses to deliver from Egypt. You remember the story, right? God used Moses and brought the people of Israel out of Egypt and says, hey, I'm going to take you to the land flowing with milk and honey. This is your destiny. This is what I have for you. And I'm going to take you. But he says, hold up, wait a minute, let's put some brakes on it, some detours in it, some delays on it. Because I really want to know, do you really love me? Do you really want this, you know, of me? Do you want my way or your way? Will you keep my commandments? Guys, when it comes to serving the Lord, when it comes to destiny for your life, where he's going to take you, It cannot be your way. It is his way. Now, maybe some of you might not come back next week. And it's all right. (laughs) I'll just play. I know y'all love me and love God and love the word. You love the word. It's not me. It's the word. God loves you. And you need to understand. It is my job as the pastor to teach you and understand that when God's calling you, it is not going to be your way but his way. And are you willing? So he's going to put the brakes. And he's going to say, okay, where are you at? Where are you at? Are you going to really love me here? Are you going to still be obedient to me even though it's not going the way you thought, the way you think? Are you? And it's crazy, guys. It is crazy because, again, who was in the wilderness? The devil. 
on top of, you know, our emotions and our thoughts that, man, I don't understand this. And God, you told me. And, and oh, there is a fight that is happening. Is it only me or do you, you can uh, relate to what I'm saying? When detours and delays come into your life and you don't understand and you're fighting with God and God, why God? Why do I have to go through this process? You promised me, God. You told me. And I know it was you. Why do I have to go through this? And we're fighting with ourselves and fighting with God. And then on top of that, the devil's there saying, yeah, you're right. He was wrong. He, sh he told you a lie. And look at it. If he was really God, he would have done it already. But you see, he, he wants to see you hurt. He wants to see you affliction. Look at the other person. Over there. He's doing it, and you're not. And he's whispering, and he's doing it. Look at it. We read chapter 4. That's actually what happens. The devil starts to talk to Jesus. Starts to talk to him. So on top of my fight, when I fight with him. But where is your heart? Do you love God? <laughs> I remember this story my mom used to tell me. Uh, she said when she first got married, my dad. My dad didn't have too much going on for himself in the beginning. And she said, you know, uh, I think if I'm correct, my abuelita... Her mom said, Mija, where, where, where are y'all going to live? And she said, you know, even if it's under a tree, I'll, I'm there. I'll go with him. Love. Love. That's what God wants our heart, guys. Because you're going to fight with yourself. You're going to fight with the devil. But at the end, your love for God will reign, guys. Your love, say like, okay. Like at the end of, you know, having the pity party, because we all have them. At the end of acting a little foolish and a little dumb, I've had them many times. Oh, shoot. Ooh, man. At the end, but I love you, God. I love you. Jesus did it in Mount Gethsemane, guys. When it was time for him to go to the cross, the Bible says three times he pleaded with the Father, can this cup pass by me? He didn't want to do God's will. He didn't want to go through what he was going to go through. And the cup of, of the wrath is the cross. I don't want to go through it, God. I don't want to go through it. But love, love for the Father says, Lord, but not your, my will, but your will be done. Because I love you. I'm willing to submit to you your way, your way, your way. When you read, and take it for homework, when you read the temptations, guys, and I'm going to paraphrase them really quick. One is the beginning, the first one is the turning the, the stone into bread. He had fasted for 40 days, and he was hungry, and the devil knew it. And he said, he tells them, hey, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread, right? Um, the devil always wants you to go the easy route, guys. When it comes, I'm telling you, this is hard. Serving the Lord is great and it's beautiful, but it is also hard, guys. And, and the devil always wants you to take the shortcut, the easy way. Just do it. He don't want you. He, he, it's the hard way. There's no shortcuts when it comes to God. <laughs> There is no shortcuts. You know, I wish there was miracle grow where they can just sprinkle me miracle grow and I can grow all that God calls me to be because that stuff really works, right, miracle grow. But there's no miracle grow. There's no shortcuts. There's no nothing. You got to go the, straight through it. You know, the Bible tells us even, guys, that the, you know, the, there's two doors and there's two gates. And, and, and the one that leads to destruction is broad and wide and everybody goes through it. But there's few that go through the narrow gate and it's difficult. Hey, guys, serving the Lord, loving God, fulfilling his purpose, it is going to be hard. And you have to, you know, really love him to, to make it all the way. So the first thing that the serpent tells the, the Jesus is turn these stones into bread, man. You got this. It's the easy way out. And they're like, nah, we're going to do it God's way. And he tells them, 
man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall be. And I'm going to tell you something about that in a little bit. The second one, he throws them out. He says, go to this cliff, throw yourself out. You know, the angels, the word says that the angels will capture you and, 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 and um, hold you up. And then he confesses another scripture that we should not tempt the Lord. Right? And, you know, and then we go to the last one. He says, you know, he takes them to, a, to a, another high mountain. He sees all the kingdoms of this world. He says, you know what? I'll give you everything if you bow to me. If you bow to me. If you worship me. Now, let me just give you a little bit of insight on that. Do you know that this part of this world is Satan's world? This is the reason why we see so much destruction, guys. And we see this, I believe, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, where he says, and the God of this world has blinded the people from seeing the light of the gospel. The God of this world, Satan has some minimal authority over this world. This is the reason why the devil was able to tell Jesus those words. Hey, I'll give you what's been given to me at this moment. Now, I want you to capture this, guys, because what God has promised Jesus, that all the kingdoms would be his. In other words, the devil wants to give it to you now, but they're already yours. But you got to do it his way. And that's why he says, hey, Charlie. But I'm here to tell you, the enemy will always try to take you away from doing it his way. And it's consistent with our bodies and our flesh. I'm going to give you three things, guys. And I want to give you the scripture, but I'm going to just give it to you. Um, 1 John 2, 16. We don't have to put it up there, but look at the, the lust of the eyes, the pride of, the, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. Those were the three areas that Jesus was tempted. And check it out, guys. These are the three areas that Eve was tempted in the Garden of Eden as well. In other words, these are the three that Satan will always try to tempt you with, to do it your way. Lust of the eyes, the bread. Man, I can see the bread already with butter. Now, you might not grasp it now if you're a foodie, you know, you, you can relate. But just imagine 40 days without eating and then seeing some bread with butter. Butter crust, man. Remember butter crust? That smell was awesome. Like you were in heaven. Like you didn't want to leave that place, like. The lust of the eyes. Just do it. Just do it. You can do it. The pride of life, guys. The pride of life is, is when Jesus, he was telling Jesus to throw himself off the cliff and that the angels would catch him. You know, when we see the pride of life, it's, it's like you, God is God and, and we are we, guys. You know, we, we can't tempt God to do something on our behalf. That's saying that we're in control. That's telling God, do my business. I, I'm going to do this, and I need you to do this for me. And that's, we, we don't have that position. That's not our place to tell God what to do. We're not. Not only that, if we do that and he's merciful, who gets the glory, him or us? It's about us. You did it. He did it. And wow, you have something. So pride, the pride of life. Of course, the lust, the flesh is the kingdoms, all the kingdoms. All the kingdoms are yours. I'll give it to you. It feels good to be on top. It feels good to be noticed. I'll give it to you. Just compromise your belief. Compromise who you are as a Christian. I'll give it to you all right now. Where is your heart, church? God wants your heart. If you and me are going to be be the light of this world, the salt of this world. Fulfill God's purpose for his, for his glory. We have to give him our heart. Because no matter what comes our way, we'll be able to stand strong. The heart is the first. It's the relationship. So I'm going to finish with this, and the worship team can come up. We're going to sing a song, and we're going to worship. But look at if you look at chapter 4 and you see every time the enemy tempted him, he spoke word. He spoke word. So 
when we go back to even point number one, to be determined and have determination, yes, it's, it's about a decision of fame, faith, firm, and fixed and focused on the sign. And, and it has to do with now the heart as well. It will, will be de- If I love someone, it's all the way to the end. All the way. I don't care what I go through. It's all the way, the heart. The third thing that I just want to show you, and this is something quick, is feed on the word of God, guys. Every time the enemy was able to speak something to him, Jesus spoke back to him the word of God. That's why he made it. That's why, because he saw the sign. Because he loved God. Because he was full of the word of God. So if you do these things, guys, we're going to make it. We're going to move forward in all that God has for our lives. Amen.